Hi guys, um, want to get another video going here before the sun goes down. It's getting late in the evening and it's cloud bank rolling in here, so I will just get right at this thing. One of the things we're facing as a problem on the mountain is uh, heating up the mini yurt. We had days where it would be 80 to 100 degrees and then at night it dropped down to like 40 degrees. We did get one of those buddy heaters to put in that runs on propane, um, but it really wasn't too happy with the results from that uh, unit. Um, the mountains uh, where, where our property is is at uh, just over 4,500 feet so it plays games with uh, gas heaters and uh, apparently it does kind of the same thing with the, the buddy heaters. They did it did function good but occasionally it would just shut off without any real good reason behind it. We're looking for something maybe a little more dependable. There's not a lot of room. We can't really use a whole house thing. It's only 120 square feet. Electricity, we're off grid so that's not really a good option. This is what we've come up with. We're going to try to use one of these um, Chinese diesel heaters and this particular one is a all-in-one unit. Uh, I've already taken the screws out of the cover on it because um, I plan to do some modifications to it and uh, once you've taken the screws out of it you have to remove the fuel cap and then this cover comes off. And you'll see it's got the, the fuel tank right here. Um, back in here is the fuel pump. Got the hose connected up to it. And this one goes around to the opposite side of the case and then up under the bottom. Then they got a couple different versions of these things. Um, some of them just have a round duct here and then these others have these four holes in them. At the time when I bought this, um, the inventory seemed to be kind of limited on some of the th uh, versions that they had. So I ended up with this one. Uh, it is 24 volts. I had two batteries from my fishing boat for the trolling motor and that has become our uh, power system out on the mountain. And uh, eventually those are going to be charged uh, using solar. We already have solar panels. Um, I got the electronics to do the inversion on it and also a charge controller. So. That'll be coming up here pretty soon because we're going to need that to power this machine. It does have a power cord on the back of it and uh, has two terminals that are going to be kind of useless for my situation. So I'll probably be cutting those off and changing them. And if you look at this side, you can see the typical shape of the heater itself. You'll see these sold um, just as a kit without this, this box around them. So you just install it. Um, as parts and this particular one they've sometimes had a cover that came off of them but this particular one stamped right into the metal box so I'm gonna have to remove this metal because I want to run a duct out of it of some kind um, this machine or this particular product didn't include any duct work for the uh, intake and, and warm air output on this machine um, back here is where the air goes in. There's a plastic cover over it uh, that pops off. And then the four holes on the front of the unit, that was where the, uh, the warm air comes out. It has this uh, control panel on it, which is basically removable. And I can, I can take it and place it elsewhere. And from what I've gathered so far, this uh, hole down at the bottom here is a thermistor port, so it's supposed to read temperature like a thermostat in the house would. So we'll find out how that works. Um, I'll be extending this cable here so that I can actually reach it inside the building. I've decided I'm going to leave this uh, unit probably outside, which may be an experience since it uses diesel fuel. I'm not sure how that. Uh, Will like being out so it may need some kind of insulation or something like that but being in the box it'll probably keep a little bit warm in there anyway 
Okay, and on the underside of these units, the actual heater itself, there's an exhaust port. And this is where uh, combustion gases from inside of the heater exit. And you have to put an exhaust pipe onto this thing and route it out just like you would an exhaust pipe from any kind of engine. Um, so that, that has to be figured out as to where that's going to be placed. This is the fuel line going into it. And then this is the intake going into the engine and they provide um, a hose and silencer that you put on there to um, put air into it from a remote location. Basically you're keeping everything that goes on inside the engine outside of your uh, confined area and only uh, warm air is being pushed through the inside or I should say around the outside of the engine through its case and uh, into the space you're going to occupy. There's not going to be any exhaust gases getting in provided you got everything um, located properly. This particular unit did include a few parts. Um, it has these hoses that are intended to go on to that four pull duct in the front. This little tube that's uh, packed inside of it pulls out of there and that's what will go on to this silencer and attach to the bottom of the unit back here. And then there's another piece of this tube um, for the front warm air vent so you can point it wherever you want. They come with this exhaust pipe which is a bendable piece of uh, uh, lightweight stainless tube. And it includes a kind of a muffler unit to silence the exhaust. And then it has a bag full of uh, hose clamps for hooking the different components together. Uh, mounting things and there is a wireless remote in there so that you can actually pair with that controller from the front and uh, remotely control it. Okay, I've attached the exhaust to this thing. Um, that's it hanging down. Conveniently there's a umbrella hole through the middle of the table I'm using here so I made a good place to drop the exhaust pipe. I put a small amount of fuel into the tank and uh, it took 16 ounces to get just below the fuel fitting here so in other words your first uh, 16 ounces is not going to do anything in the tank it's just going to lay there forever. Um, then I put a, another 16 ounces in there and that got it up to this point here so that's at least up above the fuel connection. The next step is to uh, attach this to the batteries and uh, and we'll see if we can get this fuel line to fill up. There's a process for doing that. Uh, you have to prime it and get the air out of it first since it's brand new. If you're relying on the instruction book to uh, tell you anything, it's, it's an extensive English written book, but uh, it's very confusing. The uh, language is awful. And uh, so you're going to have to watch some videos or uh, get on some like Facebook uh, forums and things like that where you can learn how to operate this because the instructions are not going to tell you how to do it. Few sparks there. I have these two batteries wired together in uh, series. So we got the positive going into the negative over here, and then uh, of course we're hooking up the red and black wires to the negative here and positive over here. So that's 24 volts. And since we got the sun pointing right on it, it's going to be really difficult to see the control panel here, but there is an image on it. It's pretty, uh, I guess it's showing up on the camera okay. It's really hard to see from a little distance away. If you look under the correct controller for this uh, unit, because there's uh, three of them in the manual, it does give you the manual fuel filling description which is not putting fuel in the tank it's uh, 
how to purge the line. It says to press and hold the down arrow. And then press the OK button. And you get the uh, HOF on there. And then you press the up arrow. That is supposed to start the process of running the pump. Uh, hopefully you can hear that. The pump is running. You can see the pump purging out there. Bubbles in the line there. So it is uh, trying to deliver fuel into the heater right now. I don't see any air in the lower line right now to speak of, so it's, uh, it's filled that line. We'll let that run until that uh, line gets primed up, and then we'll see if we can fire it up. To start it, push this uh, power button here. It says it's on. And I do hear the fan spinning up on it. There's a glow plug in there that'll have to heat up, and it does show you those items on the um, on the display as it's doing it. It shows you the fans running. Um, it shows you that there's air going in the intake down here and out the exhaust there. We're getting smoke. So we're getting smoke out of the exhaust. I imagine it's going to take it a little while before it gets up to uh, where it's warming up.
some air trapped up inside the tube here, but you can hear the pump clicking away there. Um, it's going to kind of a quicker rate right at the moment because I do have this thing just turned up on its default setting. I haven't adjusted any kind of a temperature or rate on it yet. That's the rear intake right there. itself is cool at the back and at the front of it it's just slightly warm so it's fans doing a good job of keeping the plastic housing around the unit um, cooled off and you can see inside the heater port kind of what the engine itself looks like uh, it's got fins on it kind of like a cylinder head in a way and uh, basically it burns a fire inside of it and then uh, moved over the outside of it where it comes out here so so effective way to get some heat it sounds like it's running pretty smooth right now I'm assuming this is its highest uh, setting but uh, the fan has to continue to run and uh, take the heat out of the unit or else it would obviously just melt its plastic housing off or destroy the circuit board that's on it. That's one of the concerns that I have with this particular kind of a heating unit is the electricity is pulled away from it for any reason. Um, it can't go through this shutdown sequence that's necessary to cool it. And that could allow it to self-destruct. Since we're running a solar system, that means that uh, you have to be really sure that your batteries have enough capacity to run it uh, for the length of time you intend to run it. Now there's timers that you can set on it and that, so uh, you can limit how much time it's going to run, but um, my particular solar controller has a function in it where you could plug this into the load on it and uh, when it gets to a certain battery voltage it'll shut off the load um, which would leave this incapable of cooling itself off in a cool down cycle. So it's one of those things you have to consider if you're going to use something like this. Otherwise uh, everything seems to have gone through as it's supposed to and I need to do some modifications to the get that duct port in the back of it here. Gotta get that cut out so I can get uh, duct work on that. And I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with those front ports so that I can send heat into the building. And, uh, and I have to extend the wires on this uh, on this thing here, this controller, so that uh, we can put that inside the building so that we can keep tabs on it and uh, control it that way. So we'll be back when we can figure out how we're going to modify this thing.